Welcome to the NSCHBC Edge Podcast, leading the way in the business of medicine. Now here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NSCHBC Podcast. I'm your host, Terry Fletcher. The Edge Podcast is brought to you today by the National Society of Certified Healthcare Business Consultants. Our goal is to discuss healthy business principles, have conversations on the business side of medicine, so that you and your practice can thrive, be profitable, and successful for years to come. Today, our topic answers the question, should you outsource your medical billing and make sure you know the difference between outsourcing and offshoring? It's important for an independent practice to consider their budgets and preferences when deciding whether or not to outsource their medical billing processes. Tackling these topics today and more with me today is NSCHBC member and certified healthcare business consultant and coder, Cindy Walker. Cindy is the owner of Medicus Billing and Consulting, a full-service medical billing and consulting firm with offices in New Mexico, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. Cindy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Terry. I'm happy to be here. All right. We've got some great information for our listeners today, and I just wanted to kind of start this off with, you know, there's pros and cons of, you know, basically... Uh, outsourcing and um, keeping your billing in-house. We're just not sure what works for you and not everything works the same for everybody. So that's why I'm really happy Cindy's here today as a billing service. She can give us some insights there. But first I wanted to to really get an kind of a feel for the difference between what is outsourcing versus offshoring. Because I think part of our audience may not understand that. So Cindy, I'll let you talk to that that topic. Okay. Um, thanks, Terry. That's a great question. Uh, offshoring would be going direct with a company that's overseas and um, uh, going direct with India, um, for example, and uh, working with them direct. Um, and then outsourcing would be going to a company that's based in the U.S., but may or may not use offshoring as a contractor themselves. So, um, in one scenario, you don't have the oversight of someone here in the U.S. who's licensed in the U.S. and under a corporate veil of the U.S., um, outsourcing would uh, take away a lot of your protections in the event that you had, um, or offshoring would take away a lot of your protections in the event that you had a problem because you don't have a corporation here in the U.S. um, as you would if you outsourced with a company based here in the U.S., Got it. So, so basically, if you are a company that either utilizes the offshoring or, um, or decides to go that way directly, you have to be very cognizant of what the, the legalities are with that, right? I would assume. Yes, that's correct. Your protections in the event there was a HIPAA violation, um, would be much different, um, if you, um, are, are outsourcing with a company here in the U.S. Whether or not they use um, contractors overseas, you still have more protections by um, outsourcing. If you go direct with a company in India and there was a problem, you would really um, just have no protections in the event of a HIPAA violation. So you brought up a good uh, subject, and actually, Cindy and I actually had a chance to just briefly chat about this topic uh, before we we got started on the podcast. You said that almost every billing company that outsource or billing company that is used from an outsourced situation, um, they do use um, people from an offshore from out of country. Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, it's about economics and keeping the cost low, and some of your hold times now are an hour. So, and in most cases, when you're calling um, on a claim, you are speaking to someone who is already in India. So, Aetna and some of the major carriers do have offices in India. And so, um, it makes a lot of sense for billing companies to uh, hire contractors, reputable contractors who follow uh, compliance and um, who you monitor and manage makes a lot of sense uh, to utilize them to keep the cost down. And also um, the communication is much better between the two groups. Well, and that's, I, I was actually surprised when you told me that it's actually given me some, some thought, you know, mindful thinking about this, because think about that for our listeners. 
if you do decide to outsource, so go with a billing company, and like Cindy said, many billing companies do use some offshoring um, companies as well, but you want to go with the company that has done their due diligence to make sure that is a compliant company and that you have some control over that. But just think about that for a second. You know, India is talking to India or Pakistan is talking to Pakistan. That does make sense when you think about that because there's always some kind of a negative con connotation when it comes to offshoring. So you just have to really be mindful and do your due diligence to make sure you have the right company. So let's get into some questions to consider before you outsource. So is your billing process efficient or inefficient? So Cindy, can you talk to that about collections? You know, are they, are people dropping them every day? You know, what is the difference that you've seen from an in-house billing department that could be having some issues versus outsourcing to someone like yourself, for example? Well, this is a great question because a lot of practices um, really concentrate on how well we're doing financially without having time to look at exactly what the AR department is doing, how many claims are outstanding, why you're getting rejections. And um, if you're not able to staff your in-house billers properly um, and you are shorthanded, a lot of times the AR is the last thing that gets uh, worked and sometimes it will get skipped from month to month without the owners of the practice knowing because you really get pulled to go work at the front desk or do other tasks. And so the AR is kind of the last thing that's worked. The advantage of outsourcing is you get resources from a larger company that can pull four or five team members in if needed to work the AR. Um, in some cases, our company, we map things to Excel. We give you feedback on the categories of your denials and have meetings with you and prepare financial reports for what's going on in the billing department. So if you can maintain those levels where you actually have dedicated staff in-house uh, and a manager to look at what they're doing and you are able to review your reports monthly, then I would say you could handle that in-house. If not, and most practices are not able to do that at that level, would benefit from outsourcing. I've also noticed, and you bring up really good points, that billing services seem to have a lower uh, staff turnover than some independent medical practices, especially in the billing department. And that can be damaging. So as claims, you know, are the lifeblood of a medical practice, any additions or replacements and then the training process sometimes can slow down claims. And, and I'm noticing that also, it comes into being tech savvy. Uh, one of the things that Cindy has done for the NSCHBC, which has been awesome, is she has been trailing and uh, tracking the telehealth commercial plans for us and keeping a great spreadsheet option so we know who has changed the rules, who hasn't during the pandemic and the PHE. And, oh, my gosh, the processes you have gone through just to make sure that all of us have been updated. Uh, we can't thank you enough for that. But have you seen that in practices that tech savvy and also staff turnover is an issue? Staff is a big issue. Um, if you have one person working your AR and that person goes on vacation, then your AR is not being worked. Or if they become ill or injured, um, then you're kind of stuck with your AR not being worked. So you do get the benefit of having um, multiple people that can step in and layers of staff when you outsource your billing. So it makes a big difference. Yes, I, I've seen that as well. And then also a question comes up, what about that new medical practice? So new medical practices typically have their hands full, just trying to manage patient care, marketing to get patients in. And, you know, it, make it, it makes it tough to manage billing as well when now you're trying to find uh, some, you know, staff for that. And we, as you and I know, being certified in coding and billing, et cetera, um, that those are more expensive staff. But if you don't have that, not, you know, saying that you have to be certified to be efficient, but it does allow you a little bit more benefit to um, have access to information, I guess the thing would say, this is what I would say. So what is your position as far as a new medical practice that kind of is the bare bones? Should they outsource or should they keep it in-house? A new, a new practice should definitely consider outsourcing. You get the benefit of having billing consultants, certified coders on staff. And if you're a new practice, you're probably not going to be able to hire that staff up front. So I, I know uh, certainly all billing companies can walk you through the credentialing process and, and some of the rules and help you with the coding. So 
you're not going to be able to get that in-house if you're a new practice and you start with somebody who may not have all those certifications. Well, and Cindy actually brought up a really good point right there. She talked about, you know, uh, looking at um, credentialing, meaning that you have to get on the policies of all of the different payers. But also remember, you have to, when I mentioned the tech, you also have to have a really good software and understand technical issues. And you have to invest in that. I see too many times practices are investing only in the practice management or EMR side of it, and they forget about the the medical billing software and updating that etc. So outsourcing could definitely be an option for that new practice that basically says, okay, I'm just trying to get my practice up and running and I need somebody to, once I have it up and running, can you just take this and make it work and turn it into money? And uh, I think that could be definitely something to, to take a look at. Now in saying that, what about the the practice that, and how difficult is it? Let's say you have a lot of my clients, they have Oh, at least 30, 40 physicians, and some are MCOs, some are ACOs. But I noticed that a lot of their billing departments are pretty inefficient. A lot of people have decided to you know, work remotely now, obviously, during the pandemic. But everything I'm seeing is they have two to three staff members doing the same thing, or it it's just seems to be either overstaffed or understaffed, or you just have a lot of people that really don't have um, I don't want to say a job title, but really understanding what their job is. So how hard is it to go from a really big practice to transition to a uh, billing service? It's very difficult. And so that's where going to a, a billing service can walk, you know, give you access to all the different departments, all the different knowledge without trying to um, suffer that through and house making lots of mistakes and having lost income. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I, I wanted to bring to the attention of our listeners as well, when I've seen a lot of the startup practices, a lot of times it's all hands on deck. So I noticed that the, the doctor's uh, wife or husband or spouse is the one that is managing the practice. And then the daughter or the son is the one that's in the billing office. And even, even though I, I appreciate the family business, it may not be what you need to make sure that you're collecting the money you can, that they know what Medicare is saying about everything or the different commercial plans. So consider that when you, you have to make business decisions, financial decisions, when it comes to really starting a medical practice. And please don't let your medical billing, coding, and the financial end of what you need fall into, well, we can just, we can figure it out. We can figure it out is a really tough thing when you're dealing with um, medical billing. And I think Cindy would agree with that. Definitely. Um, up front, I mean, there's so much knowledge. Really, it's not just in the coding. It's how the payers handle it. Some of the payers are different in the way they want modifiers. Some of them want an XU, some want 59. Um, you know, some, some want authorizations referrals, it's it's very confusing. You end up going through this really nasty maze of rules um, by payer. And so uh, trying to do that in a family business, trying to just bring in people without the experience to help is going to result in denials. And then you end up with so many denials, it's just overwhelming. And you pass, you pass the time that you can correct a claim or go back and learn from your mistake and go and try to correct a claim, it's too late. Some of the payers only give you 90 days. So it's really important to have the help up front. If you're going to choose to do it in-house, make sure that you hire a billing consultant maybe to help you um, up front for a few months until you get your feet on the ground. Yes, I would agree with that. You know, and the pros of keeping it in-house, obviously, you would have still have full control. A lot of people find it quick and easy. But I have noticed when I've assessed some of this that when you have a really efficient billing service, that your collections are definitely uh, better with the billing service and house, it can be lesser. Um, again, we talked about the unexpected stoppages with staffing issues, lack of space, um, experience, but the other thing is priorities. You know, many solo physicians and small medical practices just really trying to understand the entire scope of the business side of things. So one of the things that I would recommend when you're looking at billing services is make sure you try to find, if you're out considering outsourcing, try to find that billing service that not only understands your specialty, but also understands the nuances with the different insurance companies. Um, now, Cindy, how long have you been in a bit practice with your company? 
Um, I've been in a medical head of my company for 30 years. So, wow. Um, a very long time. So, see, Cindy <laughs> um, and I are is, old school. This is all I've done my entire career. Um, <laughs> I also would add that if you're looking for a company, you probably want a company that has a staff in an office. Uh, the management of the financial information and the HIPAA requirements to have staff members working from home would be uh, very difficult. Yes. And I appreciate you saying that because, you know, everyone is falling into the, as, as pivoted to the um, working uh, from, you know, home or uh, working remotely. And that's fine within a, within a company. So for example, Cindy, I don't know if you have anybody that works remotely, but having a staff member that maybe is the person that works on your reports, that's one thing, but having an office, a brick and mortar a place where you definitely have the the multiple staff and people to handle in one area that that actually is is important for from a billing service perspective where you can also have meetings too, you know, live meetings and, and really understand what's going on with within your practice. Absolutely. I mean, there are some there are a few jobs that you could outsource, but having all your billers work from home um or hiring someone who is a solo person that works from home, in my mind, that is just impossible to um, keep the safety measures in place for HIPAA. Also, you don't want patients calling about their bill and having a dog uh, barking in the background. So, um, you know, there are some positions, like you said, reporting from home or certain things that you could do if you had a large corporation even that decided to out have some of their employees work from home. But if you're working on the ground with the patients and the claims, you have to have someone within the office. And that's great advice. And and think about that as if you're, you know, you're one that is considering that outsourcing of that process because you want to focus on patient care. And also note that outsourcing your billing process to a third-party medical billing service it's not a silver bullet for your in-house billing issues. You still have to be efficient and accurate in what you capture. Otherwise, this can be a problem. So make sure that you also have at least a liaison within your office that can work with your billing service. And also, I would recommend that I mentioned to do your due diligence, make sure you have a good billing service. But, you know, for example, with Cindy, with all of uh, her experience, you know, I, I'm also a plus 30 year consultant. But we also have not only that experience, but the certifications and we have the resources to make sure that we can help you, not just from um, the NSCHBC, which has healthcare CPAs and legal teams, but also making sure that um, we have the updates from Medicare and the different regulations. And we do our due diligence when it comes to those commercial plans. And by the way, they don't always tell you, even if you're a provider, you just have to go to their website and say, oh, wow, there's an alert. There's something actually that has changed. And I always mention that telehealth because that's been an ever evolving wheel, it seems like. Uh, would you agree, Cindy? I uh, guess. I mean, telehealth, you know, we're check we are checking it monthly um, and find that some of the payers have changed their policy, you know, four and five times. It's um and, and we see that in not just telehealth. Um, you know, lots of different areas where you have pre-certification or authorization requirements that you didn't have last month. And most of that is announced online. It's crazy. Uh, there's really no organized way for us to communicate well with the payers and know what's going on. So having the staff that can give you reports and follow up for you on that is very beneficial. Right. And I agree. Well, Cindy, that is it for us today. Thank you for your expertise and insight. As a reminder to our listeners, the NSCHBC annual conference was last week, but you can still purchase the three, day of se three days of sessions at nschbc.org. Be sure to listen to Cindy's and my session. We actually did a joint session on tackling your AR during the pandemic. That's it for us today, everyone. Please join us next month, July 13th, when my guests will be NSCHB member Reed Tinsley, CPA and healthcare financial strategist, where we will be discussing physician burnout and how to work smarter for your mental and practice good health. You don't want to miss it. Everyone make it a great day, a great rest of your month, and thank you for listening to the NSCHBC Edge podcast. Thank you for listening to the NSCHBC Edge podcast. Join us on the second Tuesday of each month as our consultants tackle the complexities of navigating the business of medicine. You can reach us on the web at nschbc.org, the National Society of Certified Healthcare Business Consultants.